Good morning, and welcome to Lopes on Movies. My name is Joey, and today I am joined, as usual, by Kyle. Yo! And Connor, not live, from New York City. Hello, Joey. All right, guys, how you doing? We are here for another great episode. I'm so excited. Um, We're going to talk about something that we've been wanting to talk about for so long, ever since we first heard about it. You know what I'm saying? I actually think that we we promised that we would never talk about anime or a video game movie again, and we're breaking both of those things right now. I I guess we are. I mean, all right, right, guys. (laughs) Everybody knows knows what we're going to say. All right. Because it's been making all the headlines. The, the newest video game movie to come out. Um, you've heard about it. You're, you, people are seeing it in droves. So let's people just got fired from it. Let's let's just cut to the chase. Today we are going to talk about Dragon Quest. Your story. Yeah. Yep. Why do you sound so sad? Um, okay, okay, okay. So obviously, everybody, you know, you, you thought we were going to say the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, right? I thought you were talking about Fantasy Island. <laughs> I saw Fantasy Island. <laughs> One word review. A Fantasy Island? Yeah. Uh, can I put a hyphen in one of the sure. words? Not good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, obviously, you thought we were going to say the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, but the problem with the Sonic the Hedgehog movie is that I would have to pay to see that. You know, I have to, like, pay a ticket to see it. I, I think I I've silently, internally made a vow to never, like, spend a tangible amount of money on a video game movie in theaters ever again. However, that does not uh, preclude video game adaptations that find their way onto Netflix. Um, I still have to pay for this. You just got you just got to watch for free off me. That's true. But you, but your Netflix account, you didn't have to pay any more to watch this is what I'm saying. That is true. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's cut to the chase here. This will this will definitely be the most self-indulgent episode of Lopes on Movies ever because what we're about wow. to talk about is something that I can promise the smallest percentage of people imaginable that are listening to this will know anything about. The majority of you will listen to this show and have absolutely no idea what we're talking about. But that's okay. So before you shut off your radios or, you know, whatever you're you're listening to this on, you know, give us a chance. Give us a chance to prove that what we're about to talk about may not personally interest you, but may still be interesting in its own right. I hope so. I mean, I, I think it's interesting. That That's all I'll say. Okay. So, this this movie, Dragon Quest Your Story. This is a, a movie that was released on Netflix recently. Now, if you are not aware, Dragon Quest is a series of video games beginning in 1986 and has had regular installments ever since then. It is one of the most popular series of video games ever in Japan. Um, it's absurdly popular. It's like on the level of like Star Wars in terms of like cultural importance and like people like recognizing what it is. Um, but in the West, it's a niche series of games in a niche genre of video games. So it's it's the kind of thing that very very few people in the West are familiar with. For a large also kind of reasons. also kind of like Star Wars in uh, overseas. Yeah, actually, that's kind of a good point. That's <laughs> an interesting yeah, interesting is. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So. Dragon Quest Your Story is what we could consider the absolute bottom of the barrel of film. It, it is a 3D CG anime adaptation of a video game. Yeah. Like, that, that is embarrassing. And in, in absolutely no circumstances should we have watched this. <laughs> However, it's, a, it, it's kind of fascinating to me that it even got a release in the West because of this. But... Dragon Quest, its popularity has been growing slightly in the past couple of years because of like games like Dragon Quest XI, which was recently released on uh, first the PC, PS4, and then on the Nintendo Switch. Um, one of my personal favorite video games of all time, actually. Great game. It's, it's a phenomenal video game. So if you have any interest in, in games at all, you, know, you, should, you should check it out. Um, and also a couple of other like Dragon Quest properties that have sort of 
it's it's growing in popularity here. So whoever is in charge thought, hey, you know, maybe there's a sizable enough audience on Netflix to watch this thing. Maybe. So it ended up getting a release. It got like an English dub, an English translation, and you can watch it on Netflix right now. Now, we watched this primarily out of just morbid curiosity, I think, because mm-hmm. I don't think any of us in any in any universe would have expected this to be good or worth anything whatsoever. But as people that, you know, definitely me and Kyle and Connor as well, we're pretty big dragon quest fans, especially like, I think me and Kyle have played a lot of the games. I've played probably most of them at this point, actually. Um, I'm a huge fan of the series. I think it's fantastic. So you see a movie based on it, get released on Netflix. You can't help, but be a little bit curious and since, yeah, at least check it out. And since it costs me nothing to watch it, unlike with the Sonic movie, I have to pay a ticket and get out of my house. You know, let's let's see what this is about. I'm I'm curious. So that's that's what we're about to talk about today. So let me give you a brief synopsis of this film. Basic idea, and this is like a very very basic idea. A young man goes on a journey to find a legendary hero in order to stop an evil sorcerer from summoning a great demon. This leaves out a lot because <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to encapsulate the story of a very like complex and a story with a lot of things going on, particularly like a video game story, which of course is a problem for trying to make a movie based on it, but nonetheless. Yeah, um, yeah for, for people like, you know, <laughs> unfamiliar with this, it's, it's kind of like... Like it's kind of Lord of the Ringsy, you know. Like you could the, say that, yeah. yeah. It's I mean, that kind of world. Yeah. The basic of of ways to describe this. Yeah, like yeah. Fantasy that, world, basically. Right. Magic, fantasy genre, demons, stuff. Yeah. monsters, right. that kind of stuff. Yep. All the yep. good stuff. All 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 the hits. So, <clears throat> it was directed by Takashi Yamazaki, and it is based on the 1992 video game Dragon Quest V, which was written and directed by Dragon Quest series creator Yuji Horii. Okay. With all of that out of the way, Connor, what did you think of this? Okay, uh, to put it simply, I didn't like it. I mean, obviously. It's pretty but, simple. Uh, yeah, it puts it pretty <laughs> simple, yeah. Yeah. Um, Dragon Quest V, tremendous story. I, I played about 30% of it and looked up the rest. I know what happens, it, and it was, uh, <laughs> it, 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 was, it was good, it, really good. Great uh, character building and everything, and it's really... Uh, there's a lot in the dialogue also, and I think that's one of the things that's great about these Dragon Quest games. They're uh, they're they're considered they're RPGs, they're JRPGs. Yes. So that's Japanese role playing games. So that, mm-hmm. that's and it's like the turn based style, which mm-hmm. is I, I think it's a genre that's actually not that it's losing popularity. Like I would in say the, on the it, West, it I has think, a but... niche thing now. It, it was definitely losing a lot of popularity. I would say like maybe like even like a decade ago or or a little less. I feel like there was this big like anti JRPG turn based yeah. bias that was going around. Right. But mm-hmm. now people have kind of turned come around and there's some very popular games that are made in this format now. Yeah, yeah. And there's like hybrid types of this now also yes. where it's like right. So it, it's not as traditionally turn style, but it sort of is. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. You guys sure. are the gamers. I'm not. I'm more of like into it because I like the story. <laughs> yes. You know? And sure. I played Dragon Quest five and I played Dragon Quest eleven, the newest one. And uh you know, I like them both. And I think that that is the Probably the biggest problem with this adaptation is that the film just felt like long cutscenes that mm-hmm. didn't give the characters and the like emotional impact of the story any time to breathe, yes. which I think is a really, really the central problem of this. Right. And it, uh, it just kind of feels like it's jumping from beat to beat, and it's just it, it's you really lose the like how good this story is. Like it's yes. a really, really good story, and you. You feel like nothing, and for a lot of these scenes, these these scenes are supposed to really be be moving or also mm-hmm. be like impactful, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and anyway, we can go get into that, you know. I'm sure yes. in more detail yes, soon. Uh, another thing I, I that I liked is that I'm glad the iconic Dragon Quest music was used in this. Oof, that was uh, tell me about that, it. That was nice to see. If that was not in this, I don't know if I could have kept watching it honestly, <laughs> and I was already yeah. struggling. I had to watch it in two shifts, so it uh, <laughs> Yikes. it was tough. And one thing I didn't like, you know, we had the music, but we didn't have the art for some reason. Mm-hmm. So, like, we didn't have the art from the guy who created the, the the artist of this is Akira Toriyama, who's probably best known for the the Dragon Ball 
like saga, right? Mm-hmm. And that art mm-hmm. that art style is so distinct and it's also used in these Dragon Quest games and so great, but they they didn't use it for this, which I don't know. Maybe Joe, you know more about that. I don't know why. I it's do not actually. There. Yeah. All right. Well, well then we I'd like to. I'd like to. I'd like to hear that too. Yeah. See, there's actually things to talk about with this, which is interesting. Oh, there, there are. Make no so, mistake. In short, this was already in its greatest form, which was the game. Yes. Uh, I'll say this though: that the ending was bold. <laughs> <laughs> and uh <laughs> and uh <laughs> i'm sure we could get more into that because who the heck yeah. cares about spoilers for this kind of thing because Absolutely. i think i think that's the most uh <laughs> the most interesting thing that they did mm-hmm. uh okay uh kyle what did you think of uh yes. dragon quest your story pretty much all the same beats that you just said with the terrible pacing and great music but uh i didn't hate it but I think that's mainly just because I like Dragon Quest mm-hmm. a lot. That, like, just seeing, you know, familiar monsters, characters, stuff like that. It's kind of hard for me to hate this. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, this isn't how a Dragon Quest story should be told. Yeah. By any means. And I mean, it's just, the it thing just is, it just doesn't to work. me, Kyle, is like, you, you haven't played Dragon Quest V, right? I have not. So, and, and I've played through most of it. Connor's played through a lot of it. Um, and... The impression that I got from you after it was that you watch this, and even though it tells the like basically tells the story of the game, like not it, it's a very yeah, yeah. loose adaptation, but it does tell the story of the game. You came away from this thinking you want to play the game so you can experience I do. the story I, <laughs> like for real, you know? Yeah, I, I want to be able to see these characters more than just like two or three lines mm-hmm. and then they get you know shoved to the side. Mm-hmm. I, I want to know who Nira is without mm-hmm. <laughs> you know being in the movie for two minutes yeah. and then never getting heard from again. Exactly. So that's probably the best thing I can say about this movie is that really makes me want to play Dragon Quest V. Mm-hmm. And the music's good, obviously. Yes. But that's about it, I'd say. Mm-hmm. The ending is very bold, but yes, <laughs> yes we will talk bold. about that's that That's like soon. the nicest way to describe the ending. Bold. <laughs> Let's just say my jaw <laughs> dropped when that ending happened. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay. But, uh, Let me... but uh, yeah, so I don't really have much else to add. I'm sure, Joey, you do. So off to um, you. Okay. So I think both of you guys have explained this thing very well. Um, so just to give a little bit more background on the game that we're talking about here. So this, this, this movie is based on Dragon Quest V, the fifth entry in the Dragon Quest series. And it's widely regarded as one of the best, if not the best, in the entire series. And Mm -hmm. particularly in Japan, it is very, very well regarded, right? Now, it's fairly, like, well well known over here just because of that reputation kind of seeping through the internet and people learning about it. But it never got a release here in America until 17 years after its initial release. Not, (laughs) Not until, like, 2009, when a, yeah. a re-release came out on the Nintendo DS, right? Mm-hmm. So it's safe to say that very, very, very few people in America grew up knowing anything about this game. And that's really important when you compare that to the Japanese audience who have tremendous nostalgia for this game. Like, it's something that has sort of penetrated pop culture over there in a big way. And believe me when I say that is very important. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, I wonder why. For, and so, uh, uh, yeah, okay. We we will get to it shortly. But here's here's the thing. The basic premise of the game is, and everybody knows this about it, is that you follow the life of the protagonist, right? Like you're playing as the protagonist of the game, and you basically follow his life from early childhood to his adulthood and includes events in his life like getting married having kids all while this big dramatic story of good versus evil and you know monsters and magic is happening right so it's a interesting kind of different different kind of thing in that genre like you don't see that kind of like trying to tell the story of a life in a in this rpg genre very often um i can confirm that dragon quest 5 is phenomenal it is definitely great uh, it's some of the the most interesting storytelling in video games I've ever seen. And for that reason, that's part of the reason why this movie barely works. Because <laughs> yeah. the things that make the game so memorable are kind of unique to telling a story in a video game. And 
you being personally involved in the story is a crucial element of appreciating what's happening. Because, like, yes, you can say, like, the main character of this movie is the same protagonist from the game. But when you're playing the game, you basically insert yourself into the role of the protagonist because you're playing as him. So you are really the main character of the story, and the experience that you're having with all the characters and all of the, the things happening in the game is more close to your own experience and the experience of a, of a separate character, if that makes sense. So when you take that element out of it, it doesn't quite feel the same. It doesn't have the same impact as it would have if you yourself were sort of inhabiting the role of that main character. I mean, it's a role-playing game, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's part of the problem. Obviously, the other part of the problem is just that the, the game itself is so dense and layered and so much of the storytelling happens in the details and in things that you discover for yourself. Like, you know, if you're in the game and you wander off the beaten path and talk to a certain character, you get some detail on the story that you might not have gotten otherwise. Whereas the movie really can't spend much time on anything like that. It just has to tell the barest essentials of the plot in order to be able to make a hour and 40 minute movie out of it. Right. So it's very interesting to look at something like this and look at a video game. And it really is part of the reason why I think video game adaptations are so hard. It's because the, the two different storytelling formats are, I don't want to say they're incompatible because there are definitely video games that veer really close to movies and even some movies that veer somewhat close to video games, like 1917. <laughs> and that's not really a joke. It's kind of true if you think about it. Um, so it, it's, it makes sense that this would have some trouble. However, the trouble of the storytelling in this game, or in this movie, rather, I can't tell if it's completely salvaged by the ending or <laughs> is, is, is the ending is just so strange that there's no way to process it. But I think, I think, and this is kind of going to be a bit of a bold take, I oh think boy. the ending almost makes this good. <laughs> that is a bold take. Now, I, <laughs> the, 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 the one thing I knew about this movie going into it was that people hate the ending. <laughs> like really hate the ending right I, I heard this from just like the internet message boards or whatever talking about the movie before it came out and apparently like before it was even released over here in, in america like the japanese audiences were just absolutely rejecting it because the ending was just so bad to them right same yeah. over here for the most part it, the only thing that people want to talk about when they talk about this movie is the ending and for kind of good reason, because as we've said yeah, before, it makes sense. <laughs> like the, the movie itself is just a, like a mediocre retelling of the events of the game. Right. So, but the mm -hmm. ending is where everything, everything changes. Okay. Yeah. So who wants to, who, who wants to, to kind of explain what the ending is? Cause it's, it's. I feel like this. This is. It's about time we get to it. We're, we're going to spoil it. I know. Like nobody should care. Don't worry about it. I actually knew what the ending was before watching it, and in some ways, I think that made experiencing it a little bit less jarring. Um, so maybe so, it's uh, better if you know. So basically, the ending of this game reveals that the story that you've been watching is essentially the life of Roy from Rick and Morty. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> it That's is exactly what it is. I was very surprised, so, uh, too, that that's what they actually so, you know, did. It's, it's about to, the quest is about to end, you know, the heroes are about to seal away the, the evil, and uh, the, the game glitches, and actually, you know what, Joe, you describe it. I, it's, it's too weird. I, I, can't, I can't do it justice. Okay, so I want you to imagine something. Let's say it is, like, 40 years from now. And VR technology has gotten insanely good to the point where, like in Rick and Morty with that Roy simulation game, if you know what we're talking about, you can put on a headset and essentially live the life of some character in virtual reality, right? 
but you you yourself are you just wearing a headset but for the time that you have the headset on you are living a different life essentially what yeah. what this movie was doing was for the first 95 percent of it you <laughs> thought you were just watching an adaptation of the story of dragon quest 5 but in the last five percent they pull the rug out from under you and say no what actually was happening was that a guy got into one of these simulation chambers based on the story of Dragon Quest V and lived the life of the protagonist from that game. And what happens at the end is right before they're about to defeat the villain, a virus shows up and basically tells the, the main character, who we now realize is just some guy in the real world, that he's a big nerd and should grow up and, and, and stop caring <laughs> about that and part. stop caring about like this you know childish stuff these these silly video games um and he, the main character then teams up with one of his the, his monster pals from the movie who it turns out is an antivirus program <laughs> who exists to defeat this this evil virus that was created by just some disgruntled programmer who, you know, was was just trying to have a laugh at the expense of these people trying to have an emotional experience <laughs> playing this this uh, this real life simulation based on a video game that is nostalgic for them, and that is the key, okay? Because what the the end of the movie basically is saying is this simulation was supposed to be this big celebration of this video game that means so much to so many people in the culture, right? Like I said, Dragon Quest V, extremely, extremely popular game that has had years to develop in Japan as this, like, tremendously monumental big part of their culture. So people have very strong emotions towards it. And the ending of the movie is basically saying, like, by fighting against this this virus... This 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 virus is basically like trying to say, hey, your your nostalgia for these games doesn't matter. You know, it's all just child's play. The, the idea is like we're fighting against this because these memories that we have playing these games matter. The games mean something to us. There, it it becomes very meta. The movie becomes not about the story of Dragon Quest V. It becomes about the game Dragon Quest V itself and what it means in. Japanese culture, I guess, and what it means to the people that played it growing up. So this is pretty weird stuff. This is yeah. this is pretty wild stuff, guys. Yeah. That uh, that this is this is what it is. Um, but I'm I'm fascinated by this because. So Connor, you mentioned that the the art style of this movie does not look like a Toriyama's art, right? Yeah. As we said, Akira Toriyama is the guy who draws all the art or all the character designs and stuff for the Dragon Quest series, all the monster designs. Same guy who did Dragon Ball Z, the Dragon Ball series. Very distinct art style, and this this movie completely does something completely different. Does not recognizable at all. The what I read when this movie was first kind of like I was first hearing about it was that the reason they did that was because they wanted the art style to not look super like anime they wanted it to have more of a worldwide appeal okay hmm looks more like overwatch sure right it does kind of look like an <laughs> like overwatch in a way it, it, or just like more of like a western type mm -hmm. of 3d cg animated thing so they had some inkling in their in their minds that this is something that could play to a western audience despite the fact that the twist depends on people's nostalgia for a game that did not release in America until 2009 and nobody has heard of. Yeah, that is a big problem. <laughs> Isn't that so that. interesting? Yeah, but it, it, it's like, how do they not realize that? It's, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I'm fascinated by it. Like, it's, it, and again, like, there is some nostalgia for Dragon Quest. Like, the, the first four games in the Dragon Quest series did come out in America originally in the 80s. But then it was like a big drought until like Dragon Quest Seven in like two thousand, and like nobody played it because nobody knew what Dragon Quest was at that point. It just didn't. It never got a foothold in our culture in the same way as a series like Final Fantasy did, right? Mm -hmm. And Dragon Quest Five itself means nothing to almost anybody in the West. 
because it just never got a localization. So, why are like why would you try to make a movie whose entire climax depends on nostalgia for the game appeal to a Western audience that will never have any shot of getting it? Yeah, it's a poor decision. You know, I think they would <laughs> what they would have been better off doing is using Akira Toriyama's art style, which there has been a big renaissance for his work now. Dragon oh, Ball absolutely. Super is actually hugely popular here. I don't like it. None of us like it, but it's hugely like... popular in the West. Yeah, no, definitely. And it does. It's it's great in Japan. People would have loved to if if they would have like if they would have just, this this story. Anyone that's played this knows the story is strong enough. And if they would have just given this time, if they would have done this in in a better way, I think they could have actually made something that would that would work if they mm-hmm. just did the story yeah. and did it with Okahira Toriyama's art style and sold it kind of like that mm-hmm. also. I think they could have had something here that would have been better than the decision that they made to do this weird nostalgia, <laughs> you know, well, life of Roy thing that they well, did. He, he, I, here's I my hot it. take, though. <laughs> I feel like the, uh, the attempt at making a movie adaptation of Dragon Quest V is in and of itself a dumb idea. Because while the oh, story yeah, is definitely. strong, yeah. it's strong in its format. And when you condense it in a movie, it loses a lot of its charm. So that might be something that they realized and thought, how can we do something different to salvage the fact that this story feels kind of thin when you condense it so much? And their answer to it was was like, like galaxy brain stuff like you know just just like so out there and strange yeah you and know like, i think yeah I, I i let me just say i think i i understand what you're saying but i i do think this story is strong enough to where maybe this could have worked as like a like a mini series kind of thing oh and they yeah. could have done it in like no, parts be, and yeah. sections and i would have liked i like this story a lot and yeah. just like like right from the, like i'll go quickly about this right off the bat like when this thing starts I knew that this was gonna be, there was gonna be huge problems, and like mm-hmm. no one who's not familiar with Dragon Quest V will be able to understand the emotional impact or anything that's going on in the story because mm-hmm. it starts off using the actual sprites and gameplay from the game. Yeah, that was and weird. It, where you lose all of the connections that are gonna be vital to the mm-hmm. Im- impact of the story, like the yeah. relationship that you're eventually gonna have with this character Bianca, is yeah. is like you lose all of that. Like yeah. it, it comes into like. Oh, we're these we're these people that have known each other and they've always been there for each other for so long. But we don't, we're just meeting this person, yeah. other than the yeah. couple is like a minute that we saw like the gameplay thing. But I think if you stretch this out, you maybe like a four parter kind of thing, and really kind of delved into the storyline and the connections between the characters. I think you could have had something here. Yeah, I think it no, could, I think no, it could have worked. They're, they're doing stuff like this already. Like the The Witcher is fairly popular with fans, mm-hmm. and that's like taking a video game that's, uh, that's true. And stretching it out over a series, I think, I think that could have worked. Now, if they just all they could do is make this in one format, and that's it, one movie. Then I guess you're right; they had to do something, <laughs> and this is what their decision was. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I think I, I, I don't know. I I don't know who this is for, honestly. Yeah, I mean, it's Nappy. definitely not for <laughs> for Western people. You know, the, the American no. fans. I mean, like I I as somebody who's played through Dragon Quest V and knows a very like a lot about Dragon Quest. Like, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm the ideal audience because I'm not the kind of person that seeks out 3D CG anime adaptations of video games. Um, okay, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless, in terms of, like, a- a- American fan of Dragon Quest, I am the audience for this. And, uh, I, I don't know, what can I say, guys? Don't watch it. But what you should do is definitely uh, play uh, Dragon Quest games. Because they're they're lovely and wonderful. I think that that about wraps it up, everybody. I want to thank you for listening to this uh, kind of unorthodox episode of Lopes on Movies. I hope uh, it was this is gonna be our best one. I, I hope it was interesting for you, even if it's something that you don't personally have investment in. Um, but we will see you next week when we will definitely not talk about the Sonic movie because uh, we are we are not gonna see the Sonic movie. No, maybe yeah, Kyle will. Well, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna see it. I'm just not gonna talk about it. <laughs> we'll make you talk about it if you see. It. No, no, no. I'm, I'm like, gonna keep my wait, like sim- to myself. similar to my review of Fantasy Island. Yeah, I'll, I'll do. A, I'll do like a one-word review. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess I, I instead of saying not good, I could have just said bad. <laughs> like, you know, yeah, like, but I think not good hits. <laughs> not, not good sounds worse. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs>
All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. Have a lovely rest of your morning.